Hello, Taras here. Welcome to another episode of Ocean State Aquatics Television. And today, we're gonna to be doing a video that I've wanted to do for a long time, but I was afraid to do, because it's a little complex, honestly. But I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Why do fish look the way they do? We're not, this is in terms of color, specifically. We're not gonna talk about like functional morphology or anything like that. So why, why do fish have all these pretty colors? I think it's pretty, easy to say that that's the reason why we like them. Every aquarium keeper has seen those colors. I mean, maybe some people really like the shapes and different sizes of fish too, but like, it's the colors that really, they're the thing that draws in the average person and why the fish tank has a nearly universal appeal, even if you're not a reef head or a fish tank geek. Why do fish have these colors? Why are they so darn cool? Well, the obvious answer is, well, they're just, they're freaking fish and that's how they look like. And that's also, kind of a good reason. What we see as blue and green and purple and all these radiant colors are just the way our, our eyes are designed to see the light that's bouncing off those fish. So I guess a better question without being a smart ass is why do they throw back that light that looks to us like beautiful colors? It's because of a lot of things, but mostly it's because of fish are the products of their diets. All color is functional. So the color that is, uh, that is acquired by a fish, and the radiancy of that fish reflects not only the genetic you know, composition of the fish and how its cells are shaped and the like, but it reflects the diet of that fish. and reflects the power of the diet of that fish. And that's so important for so many things. Because for one, a beautiful fish is a healthy fish, and that's good for aquarium keeping. And a good fish that's a beautiful fish is also good for us. And that's because of things like pigments. Pigments are used by algae and photosynthetic bacteria and other microbes to acquire light. So there's basically one major pigment called chlorophyll A and that converts all light into carbs. That, that's the photosynthetic engine. And then all other pigments are basically used to grab all the other spectrums, blue and ultraviolet, and give that to chlorophyll A. But these pigments, right, they do so much more than gather light for photosynthesis. Now, what is that? To gather light for photosynthesis is to gather electrons, is to gather power, They're like little solar panels. Now, when you think of that, they're not only just this array for gathering light as we see it coming out of like a unit or a camera, it's this power that can be harnessed in different organisms. So essentially these pigments that are made by the algae once they're consumed by, let's say, a copepod or an amphipod or something of that manner, they're such strong compounds that they aren't destroyed. They are actually incorporated into the fats of whatever critter ate them. So the color of the amphipod is directly dictated by the color of the algae that made the pigment that, that it ate. And that carries on all the way to the smaller fish that ate that copepod, to the herring that ate all the little microalgae, to everything that makes all the pigment and everything that we see before you. So fish are unique because unlike us, there aren't a million different colors of humans. You know, we have like a relatively limited, you know, set of pigmentation when it comes to human coloration. And in many other species, that pigmentation is even far more limited. But in fish, even single individuals of, of, of species that are in different localities, they can look completely different. You can have two stock trout in two different ponds and some can be radiantly beautiful and the others can be rather drab. And the difference because of that is because of this diet. These carotenoids, these pigments that become fused within the fat of the fish and then basically fish turn these fat pigment complexes into the colors, the, the Bob Ross painter's palette that we consider all the different colors of fish in the oceans, seas, and streams. So things like tuna xanthan, the greens, uh, carotenoids that make the orangish reds, um, all different fish colors are really these complexes of, of these pigments fusing uh, from the fish's diet into the fat of the fish and then being formed in the colors. Now, why does that matter? Well, because these pigments are so good at being able to harness electrons and photons from light, they are great antioxidizers. They basically eat all of the rogue electrons that are just produced when fish grow and, and all these other things that if they were, if these electrons were allowed just to scatter about, they would cause things like cancer and, and different diseases over time. But because a healthy fish is a beautiful fish, it has all these pigments, all these batteries, they're able to store all those radicals and they're able to store all those electrons. And because of that, a beautiful fish 
represents the health of all the stability. They also are extremely good at transporting oxygen. So when a fish's fat cell has lots of pigments and carotenoids and xanthophils fused within them, they're not only beautiful, but they become oxygen superhighways. So when fish's eyes are really beautiful, when you see pigmentation around their brains, their gills, it's because these places are, are super hubs of oxygen commerce and they drive all the most beautiful things that not only look wonderfully beautiful to us, but represent the beauty of that fish's life and its ability to do everything the way it has and be able to persist out in this crazy place. For lack of a, a better summarization, why do fish look the way they do? It's because their diets and all coloration is functional. Nothing is incidental and not everything just has a blatant explanation like, oh, that snake is really bright because it's poisonous and it wants to warn you. Color is more nuanced. And uh, for that reason, looking at fish and wondering about their colors and being fascinated by that is one of the most wonderful things that uh, an aspiring scientist or anyone else uh, can do. And one of the reasons why I love this hobby ever so much. So thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.